David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. If I happen to add something to my personal collection that's no longer in production, you know, I debate whether or not it's worthwhile to do a review. If it's no longer readily available to purchase, then essentially it's just an eye candy review. Those aren't inherently bad, but okay if done in moderation. In regard to the pen I have for you today, I showed it during the size comparisons of a recent review, and enough folks said that they would like to hear more about it. So, here you go. The pen is the Omas Vintage 360. What I am going to do today is go over the parts and features of this historically unique offering, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen, show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Um, I recently attended the Triangle Pen Show. Uh, there is typically an auction held on the Saturday night of the show. Uh, in years past, for varying reasons, I've skipped the auction, uh, mainly because it runs rather late, and since it's my home show, I uh, don't stay at the hotel, so uh, I need to get home for the evening. Uh, also, the items historically have skewed heavy vintage, which is not what I'm generally into. But this year, there were several lots of modern pens, and one specifically stood out to me, an Omas Vintage 360. New, unused, and still in the box and wrapper. Uh, this is a pen I had on my wish list for a very long time. Um, I thought this might be an opportunity to pick one up. So I went to the auction with a max price in mind, which is a good idea, setting predetermined limits so you don't get caught up in a bidding war. Um, I ended up winning the auction and was pleased. At what price? Um, I'll tell you at the end of this review. Um, I found listings online for used fountain pen versions of the 360 asking anywhere from $700 all the way up to $4,000. So yes, the price can vary greatly for this particular pen. Okay, that was a rather extended intro. Let's take a closer look at this very distinctive pen. It arrives in this rather large box. Um, I've seen this box alone listed on eBay for uh, $300. Uh, who knows if they will actually get that. Um, it has the Omas logo on top here. And if I can actually get it out of here. There we go. Um, it has the Omas logo on top. And the lid lifts off. Uh, and then on the inside of the lid, it's padded and debossed with Italian creativity, history, craftsmanship, the pleasure of writing. Uh, now, in case you don't know the difference, if something is embossed, the lettering is raised, and if it's debossed, the lettering is recessed. Um, also, the lining that they use on these boxes is very soft and luxurious. Um, also included is a use and care guide. There's some uh, warranty information. Uh, and then there's also some marketing information as well with some information about Omas. Um, inside here, there is a bottle of Omas turquoise ink. Um, it arrived with this little barbell sticker on it with the number 102 written on it twice. Um, I'm unsure of the meaning of that. While this is a limited edition pen, the number is not 102, so that number will uh, most likely remain a mystery. Uh, there is then a very soft pen sleeve, a felt one, and inside we have the pen. This is the Omas Vintage 360 in translucent turquoise. Um, I believe this model was released in 2012. Omas was founded back in 1925 in Bologna, Italy by Armando Simoni. Uh, Omas is actually an acronym. It stands for Officina Mechanica Armando Simoni. Uh, Armando was fond of Greek culture and he imprinted that passion into many of his pen designs. Uh, this one here included. Uh, back in 2019, Omas produced its last pen and shut its doors, but recently the brand was revived. Uh, you might want to check out my somewhat recent review of the Omas Ojiva 222 to learn more about what's currently going on with the company. 
Uh, this pen was made in several different colors and materials. Um, I have a friend from my local pen club who owns a prototype made from aluminum that looks really great. Um, I've even seen one made from Arco celluloid, which looks incredible, but as you can imagine, also has a very hefty price tag. But I think this model looks great as well. The pen is made from a translucent turquoise cotton resin and what they call HT Silver, which stands for High Tech Silver. Uh, it was also available in rose gold. While I personally prefer rose gold over yellow gold, I think that the silver looks great on this pen. The translucent resin gives you a number of unique looks at the internal guts of this triangular pen, uh, and I do really care for this unique triangular design. Okay, let's take a look at the parts and features of this pen. The top of the cap comes to a rounded point. Then the cap angles up until about this point here where it straightens out. Um, the exterior of the majority of the cap has a grooved texture, uh, making for an interesting tactile feeling. And it serves a functional purpose of helping you get a solid grip on this cap when you remove it. Um, I like how there is a little dip in the pattern to accommodate the clip, but then that same indentation is replicated on the other two sides. I also like how this clip is on one of the angles as opposed to it being on one of the flat sides. Uh, this allows the clip to be facing directionally up when setting this pen down. And then it also remains in alignment if the nib, uh, if you should cap it with the nib facing up. Now, you can't see the nib because there is a darker opaque inner cap which serves a dual purpose. Uh, there are three little prongs which are part of the capping mechanism, and while capped, the inner cap creates an air barrier which helps the nib from drying out. Uh, then we have the swooping clip. Uh, it is rather thin, uh, and with the tip angling skyward, it really helps accommodate materials thick and thin. Um, it's not overly stiff either. Uh, near the end of the cap, it has the company name, Omas, and Italy, where this pen was manufactured. The next side has 360, the name of this pen. And then the final side has the limited edition number of this pen. Uh, at the end of the cap, there is a small thin band, and then there's a larger band with a Greek key design, which can be found on many Omas pens. Uh, there is a medium step down from the cap to the barrel. Uh, the barrel angles down very slightly, only about half a millimeter from beginning to end, so it's almost imperceptible. Then you reach another thin band, the piston knob, and then the very end comes to a rounded triangular point. Uh, this piston knob does have two small holes which contain screws to affix the knob. Uh, they are so small, uh, they really blend in well, so I really don't even notice them. The cap snaps off, and underneath we have an 18 karat gold nib. Uh, it's stamped with the company name as well as a stylized representation of a top-down look of this triangular 360 model. Uh, I think it looks really sharp. And here's a look at the low-profile ebonite feed. Uh, this feed design is not exclusive to Omas, uh, but this sleek design is one of my favorite feed looks. The section begins with a very slight flare used in the capping mechanism. Uh, there is a thin band, followed by a wider one, again with the Greek key design. Uh, the section angles up at an even rate of incline until you reach a stair-step transition to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this section is triangular. Uh, that is a shape which might not work with all grip styles. Uh, it tends to force you into a specific grip. Uh, it works well with my natural grip style and I find it to be comfortable. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post and it does post securely. Uh, the cap is fairly light so I don't find it backweights the pen or throws off the balance, but it doesn't post that deeply so I find it adds a bit more length than I prefer, making it a bit unwieldy. So I prefer to use the 360 unposted. Um, since I've mentioned the piston knob a couple of occasions, uh, you can correctly deduce this is a piston filler. 
The piston mechanism uh, feels very solid. Um, I have an Omos Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel in my collection where the knob feels a, a bit weak, uh, like if I turned it slightly the wrong way it might break. Um, fortunately, it hasn't, but it just doesn't feel that solid. So I'm glad that the piston knob on this pen feels a bit more solid. Um, you do get a good look at your ink situation in the forward portion of this barrel. The translucent material really provides you a good look at the inner workings of this pen. Uh, while I care for piston fillers, this pen also demonstrates the main issue I have with them, uh, which is the mechanism takes up a lot of space. Over half of the barrel is just taken up by the guts, with less than half remaining for the ink chamber. Um, I think my favorite filling system is a vacuum filler. Uh, those systems have very little in the way of internal mechanism, allowing for a significantly higher potential ink capacity. Um, I mentioned up top that I picked up this pen at an auction. Um, I won the auction for $350, uh, but there was a reserve on this pen. Uh, if you are not familiar with auction terminology, a reserve is a minimum amount that the seller will accept for the item. Uh, the reserve is typically not revealed prior to the auction. Uh, if the winning bid is lower than the reserve, the item then goes unsold. Uh, at some auctions, like the one I attended, they will inform the winning bidder of the amount of the reserve and then give them a chance to increase their bid to match it if they would like to purchase this pen. Uh, going into the auction, I had a personal limit as to what I was willing to pay for this pen, and lo and behold, the reserve was exactly that number, which was $800. So, while I would have much preferred to only pay $350, I felt that the final amount was a uh, reasonably fair price for this pen, considering the going prices for these pens on the secondary market. Um, I've been using this pen a great deal over the last few weeks, and I've really been enjoying it tremendously. Um, it is cool and unique, uh, which really checks off a lot of my personal preference boxes. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Omos Vintage 360. Just wanted to give you another look at this cool triangular design. I think you get a really good look at the guts of this pen. And you can even see the ink sloshing around in there. I just really like it a lot. Except for when you set it down in one of these uh, trays here. In which way do you set it? It really doesn't sit like that. So it angles just a little bit. In regard to a couple of other Omos pens, uh, this is what it looks like with a Mylord in the Arco Celluloid, which is just one of my favorite materials. Then next up, we have an Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Uh, and then finally, uh, in this batch, we have uh, a pen that is at least named for Armando Simone, which is the uh, AS Alone, Bologna Extra Arco. In regard to a couple of other pens, this is what it looks like with a Pelican M1000 and a Montlant 149. And then finally with a Sailor King of Pen in uh, Ebonite. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with the Mylord and the Montlant 149 and then the Pelican M1000. Here we go with the writing sample for the Omas, and this is the Vintage 360. This is a fine 18 karat gold nib, and the ink that I'm using, appropriately enough, is what came with the pen, which is the Omas Turquoise. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice solid turquoise. It's a bit on the lighter side. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to the Visconti turquoise, which is a little bit on the darker side. And then here it is with Paniter's turquoise, which uh, is a little lighter, but has some more shading to it. 
This is a look again at that Omos ink bottle. Something I really like is the design of this ink bottle. Uh, when you are filling it, if you need to get down a little bit more, you could set it on its side like that. And it's pretty sturdy here. I, I don't have a fear that it's going to uh, fall over, but it's a good way to uh, get access to a little bit more of the ink when you're using it. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, as I mentioned, this is a fine nib. Um, it, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as overly smooth. Uh, you can get some decent flexibility out of here. Um, but I would say that there is a bit of feedback to it. It's not so much that it feels scratchy, but uh, there is a bit of feedback to it. For a fine nib, I think it has a really nice uh, uh, ink flow to it. And then in regard to some reverse writing, I'd say it is rather sharp, but it did lay down a nice line. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up very well. So there we have the Omos Vintage 360. Uh, this is a pen, like I had said, I had wanted for a very long time, uh, and I was glad I was able to finally pick one up uh, that, uh, you know, I didn't compromise. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't inexpensive, but it was one that I really enjoyed the looks of, and it was brand new, and I just think overall it looks really nice. So I've been very pleased with this purchase. And then on top of that, it performs nicely as well. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.